Hello everyone, <laughs> sorry about that. So someday I will figure out how to push all of the proper buttons for live stream. Until then, you get to deal with me kind of hobbling along. So I know you didn't get to see the, um, the materials list, but it is in the video description below. So you can check that out there and I'll show you what we're using as we go along. So if you notice, my studio looks a little different. This is the new and improved studio and it will probably change as um, time goes on so you can expect to see it look a little different from time to time um, I don't know if you can hear that but of course there's a big huge tree trimmer across the street cutting down this gigantic tree so it's kind of loud hopefully you guys can't hear it um, so we have quite a good group 180 people in in the live that's awesome Thanks guys, I didn't expect that many. So um, let's start out, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about today. So um, today I'm starting with, it's a brand new canvas and I did add a layer of gesso to it. And I wanted to talk about gesso because out of all the things that I get asked about, gesso is like one of the top things that people ask questions about. And I don't really understand the confusion with gesso. I think that we make gesso out to be so much more important than it actually is. So people always ask me, why didn't you gesso your canvas? Why don't you ever gesso your canvas? Well, the short answer is, where did it go? I just had, there it is. A canvas that you buy prepared, this is a brand new canvas in the package, that is gesso. It has gesso on it. So you're not required to do that. If it didn't have gesso on it, it would be that tan color. That's the canvas without the gesso on it. So I add gesso sometimes if I wanna change the texture. So for today's painting, I want a little bit more tooth. The canvas, the gesso that comes already on the canvas is a little more smooth than I like when I'm scrubbing. So I added a little bit more gesso. Now, let me show you what a canvas looks like that doesn't have gesso, because I think a lot of you don't believe me <laughs> for some reason. This is a canvas with no gesso on it. <laughs> you see, you can see right through it. And this is an old Michaels canvas that I had painted on a million times. And there was a little piece of paint poking up and I started peeling it. <laughs> it took all of the layers of paint that I put on it off as well as the factory coat of gesso. So this is a very, very thin, see you couldn't paint on that. It, your, your paint would come out the other side, the fabric would absorb all of the moisture, etc. So the question to why don't I ever gesso my canvas is I do sometimes when I wanna change the texture, otherwise they're already gessoed and it's not a requirement. So enough talk. Let's go ahead and get started on our painting. Um, if you are, whoa, I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, this is the image that I kind of used for a reference. I got it on Pixabay. So I liked it and I decided to take the basic concept and use that for the painting that we're gonna do today. Um, if you're watching live, and you have questions, please make sure that you put your questions in all caps. Uh, Vince is here and he will be kind of fielding me questions because I can't paint and pay attention to chat at the same time. So let me zoom in here. Actually, I'm gonna, I really do need like a whole production crew. It's really hard for me to do this and you know, not make you sick. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom you up so that you can see this part close up. We're gonna start by kind of doing my um, 
smoky background technique where we do quite a bit of scrubbing. And so I'm gonna just zoom you in there for a second. Don't get sick. They're saying they can't hear this. Okay, good. I'm so glad you guys can't hear that because it is so loud. All right, so I have my number 12 cloud brush and it's dry. And the reason it's dry is if it's wet, it's gonna smear the paint way too much and I don't wanna smear it. I just, nice catch. I just wanna kind of put it there and get that foggy look. So I'm gonna start with kind of a, a stormy color up at the top. So I have my ultramarine and burnt umber and I'm gonna get a bit of each. It doesn't matter if it leans more toward ultramarine or burnt umber, whatever you prefer. So I have a good amount of paint, but it's not, there's no blobs. And I'm gonna get just a little point of white because I don't want it to get too light. I just don't want it to be ultra dark. So I'm just using kind of the tippy toe, see that? To kind of start pushing it around. Nice dark color. Don't worry about blending it perfectly. If you have some spots that, you know, have more white or more blue or more brown, just let that go. You just want the overall dark and light of a stormy sky. A little bit more of that blue-brown, a little bit more white. And every time I go back for more, it's gonna be a little different. Sometimes I might pick up more white, sometimes more brown, more blue. But notice I deposit that color outside of the area I just finished. And then once I've gotten the bulk of the paint off of my brush, then I can lighten my pressure to that tiptoe pressure and kind of scoot into that first section. Kind of take it onto the toe and scrub it in a circle if I'm having a hard time getting down into the texture. There we go. See, that spot was more blue than the previous section and that's perfectly okay. Don't micromanage your colors. Just let them do what they're gonna do. You know, if you, if you pay attention to like a super stormy sky, there's gonna be all kinds of colors in there. You know, it's, it's not always just a solid color, just, you know, darker versions of gray. You might have some blue or even, even peach, just really interesting colors in your sky. So if you get some blue, that's okay, or some brown. All the way across the top here, I'm generally keeping it this darker color. I may kind of make some surprising little spots here and there. Like I just picked up, it's just a smear of white. It's not a ton of white. Just kind of have a little spot that's a little bit lighter than everything around it. Keeps it interesting. Somebody did have a question about the brush that you're using. Okay, somebody had a question. Um, about the brush that you're using. You said it was a number five. Is that a cloud brush? No, this is the number 12 cloud brush. Oh, number 12. Yep. I think she thought you said five. Oh, nope. Hey Vince, will you tell me who's asking questions when you, just so I can give people shout outs? Sure. Thanks. So, Mr. Moon is actually here. That was Ellen Suri. That was who? Ellen Suri. Oh, that was from Ellen. Mr. Moon is here, so you might get to hear Mr. Moon later. I know he's been missing lately, but he's here now. See, we've got some interesting little changes going on in that color. I'm just gonna take you across the top here, and then when I move down into the next section, I'll zoom you out so you can see the whole thing. It's just a variation, you know, of different pressures. You don't want to just, you know, put your paint down and just start scrubbing like that. See, I'm not getting any coverage. It's very controlled, kind of stick to a certain area pirouette it like that to get down into the texture, scrub it back and forth like that to soften it up on the tiptoe to blend it with a previous section. You can even pick up a little bit more, whether it's darker or lighter, to kind of help blend into a section. I think that's really interesting. Just be controlled. I do see sometimes people just kind of do this. They just like start scribbling everywhere. And you're not, 
first of all, you're not going to get coverage. You're going to get frustrated because it's not going to cover and you're probably going to end up going through a lot more paint. And second of all, even if you do get it to cover eventually, it's not going to look, it'll either look too blended or it'll look too, you know, um, chaotic. So just be kind of controlled with it. There we go. We can zoom me out a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm really picking up the same amount of blue and brown, but I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. So see, I've got almost kind of a blob of white now and just start somewhere, but I'm starting below where I left off. I'm going to lay down that paint. Now, when I say lay down the paint, I know you probably can't tell, but on your canvas, if you're painting, you'll be able to tell, you can see some texture in there. If I start trying to blend that while I've still got that texture, I'm just going to smear it up into here and lose all of this. So I want to keep kind of scrubbing that until that texture is gone. Once that texture is gone, then I can work on blending it up into here. Gwen has a question. She wants to know what kind of bristles are in your cloud brushes because they never tangle. <laughs> so Gwen asked what kind of bristles are in my cloud brush. They are synthetic nylon bristles. Um, I know there's like a fancy name for them and I'm pretty sure DuPont is in there somewhere, but I don't know exactly. But yeah, these ones don't tangle at all. Um, I know sometimes, you know, you get a brush that tangles and you spend all your time kind of combing it out. But, and I kind of expected that with this one. And I expected that the bristles would get all puffy. <laughs> very, very quickly because, you know, I'm not friendly with this brush. Man, it was made for scrubbing and I make it do its job. And so I really expected, you know, after a handful of times using it or, or at least after a couple months using it, that I'd really start to see some puffing out on the ends and I haven't. And I've been using this brush now. See, I picked up a lot more white that time. I've been using this brush now for over a year and it it gets used. <laughs> Denise asks, says, I am getting a lot of brush strokes. Is that okay? Denise asks if she or that she's getting a lot of brush strokes. So I don't really know what you mean by that. Are you seeing your brush strokes on your canvas? That's what I'm, 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 I'm. So Denise, if you're seeing your brush strokes on your canvas, I'm going to guess there's two things at work here. Three things. I can think of three reasons that would happen. First of all, you might be using too much paint. Second of all, you might not be thinning it down. See, remember how I said thin it down. Don't see any texture and then start blending it. And the last thing is you may not have used gesso or the gesso you used is just very smooth. And that's exactly why I used gesso was to avoid seeing brush strokes because when I do this, on the canvas out of the package, I do see a lot of the brush strokes. Now right here, I think that's ugly because it's just like this kind of a puffy spot on the dark there. So if you get things like that, please don't freak out and try and keep scrubbing at it because all you're gonna do is make that puffy spot bigger. So we have two options and either one is perfectly fine. It's whatever you prefer. First option, you can come in and grab a tiny, tiny bit of your darker color and with that super soft tiptoe pressure, go over the edge. Or you can come in and grab a tiny, tiny amount of white and do the same thing. I'm gonna grab white. And by a tiny amount, I mean that. See that tiniest smear right on the end. My pressure, my brush isn't even gonna bend. I'm gonna put it right on that line and just kind of nudge. See that? And now I've almost got like a cloud top there can come in and get a little more. And let's blend this part out. It's still kind of ugly because sometimes when I try and paint slow to demonstrate, <laughs> things look weird. So I picked up a tiny bit more white. I'm just going to kind of Put another little 
cuff right there. So now we've almost insinuated a bit of a cloud top. A bit more of that dark color and just Sissy buzz that question. out. Who has a question? Sissy has a question. Kay. She wanted to know if you're using basics or heavy body. Um, Sissy asked basics. if I'm using basics or heavy body. Today I'm using heavy body. It really doesn't matter except it will matter with the yellow like we've talked about before. If you are considering trying out heavy body paint, I highly suggest you upgrade all of your cadmiums, cadmium yellow, red, orange, upgrade those to heavy body. The rest of them, like I see a little difference. Uh, even with the white, I don't have a preference between the heavy body white and the basics white, but with the cadmiums, absolutely you wanna go heavy body on those. The basics, See, I'm not quite blending out some of those lighter spots. You can if you want to, but I'm not, I'm not intentionally trying to make clouds. I'm just not putting effort into blending out some of those white spots. And in doing so, I end up making cloud tops. In fact, I think I'm gonna kinda put one there. See, super easy, guys. Don't focus on making clouds. If you focus on making clouds, I think that's when it gets difficult. Just a little bit of white that's not blended out all the way. And now we have a cloud. Let's bring you down just a little bit more. So I've had this tripod for like four years and every time I go to make it go up or down, I choose the wrong direction. <laughs> no matter which way I'm trying to go. You'd think that after four years I'd know exactly how this tripod works. But anyway, sometimes I use heavy body Sometimes I use basics. I'm really only gonna tell you which one I'm using if it matters. And it really doesn't matter except for the yellow. All right, I picked up less brown and blue and quite a bit more white. Can you see that? My white is kind of, I've got kind of a blob of white on there. And so if I stick it right on this color, that color is now gone. So I'm gonna start See, about an inch or so below. Make sure to smooth it out. Smooth that color out. No texture in that paint that I just put down. Claire has a question. One sec. And now, tiptoe pressure. See, my brush isn't really bending. I'm just gonna get it right up there and blend it in. All right, Claire has a question. How do you stop the clouds from turning into warmth? How do you stop clouds from turning into worms? So that's, that kind of goes back to what I was saying about stop trying to make clouds. Okay, so I'll demonstrate down here for you. Worms, I feel like worms happen when we're super focused on making clouds. And I would say 90% of the time when I see somebody has made worms, I can tell exactly what they've done. So let me show you. I don't wanna get it too dark because I want that part to be pretty light, but. Okay, so I have some color here. I'm gonna show you how I interpret a worm is made, okay? Because they always look the same. I kind of picture people doing the pirouette thing like this and they go like that and then they don't know what to do. And so they end up leaving it. And you know, that's what the worm clouds look like almost every time I see them. So instead of doing that, like I said, I want you to don't try to make clouds and don't pirouette. That is only for when you're trying to force the paint into the texture. So if I wanna make a cloud, See my brush, I'm at the half foot pressure. Remember half foot pressure is like if you're standing kind of on your toe, not on your tippy toe, but you just kind of rock forward. So that's half foot pressure. So I'm just gonna kind of start, I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna bring it back down around this way. Maybe I'll pirouette for a second. I'll bring it back over here. That's the kind of brush stroke for clouds. Don't think, start over here and vroom over here. Clouds are very, you know, for the most part, sometimes they have a very distinct shape. So watch, this is gonna be really what I just demonstrated here for you. 
See, I started in one area. I'm just laying down that paint. I don't care what this looks like. I know it looks like a worm. Once that paint is as thin as it's gonna get, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more white. Super light pressure. All I'm focusing on is covering that canvas, making sure those two sections are blended. And I have to go, kind of go back and forth. See, that doesn't look like a worm at all. Let's do this little section here. Let's get a little bit more white. Oh, that's too much. There we go. Up, kind of back, break it up. Another thing I think happens when people are making worms is they're using too much paint. So they're like getting this huge glob and they're expecting that huge glob to make this one cloud. That huge glob should cover the entire sky. It's the little highlights like right here that we put on afterward that say it's a cloud. In fact, now I feel like my brush has quite a bit of dark. I just picked up some white. I'm sorry, Vince, did you say there was another question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Linda wants to know, can you also use a glazing medium to help with blending in spots? Um, Linda wanted to ask if glazing medium would help blending here. I don't think so. And also glazing medium is going to make the paint very transparent. And so I wouldn't, but that doesn't mean you can't. I mean, there's a trillion bajillion, that's an actual number, ways to make clouds. And just because I can't think of a way to make clouds with glazing medium doesn't mean it's impossible. Try it. You may come up with the technique that is just absolutely incredible and everybody wants to do, but I can't think of how I would use it. So real quick, I took that darker color. See here, I just filled that area in. There's no cloud there. Now I picked up a tiny bit of white and I'm just gonna kind of come in and say, there's a little bit, blend it. See how I started over here? I went up, down, back. that half foot pressure. See, very scattered. Cloud, no worms. Let's take you back down. See, I did it again. I just got done putting this down and I still tried to do it the wrong way. So we have another question. Um, two, two part question. What kind of gesso did you use for this painting? And secondly, can gesso be used in place of white? So what kind of gesso did I use? I just used the Liquitex uh, Basics. The Liquitex Basics gesso. I love this one because it is super dry, super, super toothy. I've used other ones before that were almost like white paint, like very slick, and I hated it. So if you want a dry, toothy gesso, this one. I buy it in the gallon because I use it a lot. Is there a longevity difference between paint and gesso, white paint? Uh, a longevity dis difference between gesso and white paint, I don't really understand. I don't know what that means. Like, well, I guess one lasts longer. Um, well, one lasts longer than the other. Like, on the canvas or in the jar? I don't... I mean, they're both archival. If, if you're using artist-grade paints, they're archival. So they should last, you know, as long as each other. Can you use white gesso for white paint? I've heard that some people do. Sorry, I'm only picking up white here. I still have quite a bit of color on my brush. This is only white, even though I know it still looks kind of brown. I know I've heard some people do use white paint, uh, gesso as white paint, but I don't really understand that because Gesso doesn't have, A, it doesn't have any tint. So if you mix it with another color, all you're gonna get is tinted gesso. You know, you're not gonna mix it with red and get pink, unless you use a tiny bit of red, but it's just pink gesso. Also, gesso is very transparent. It's basically a binder with, you know, like a, a powdery aggregate in it, which is why it, like, almost like chalk. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's almost like, you know, just a binder with chalk in it. I'm going to pick up the tiniest bit 
Can you see how much I picked up of that dark color? Almost none. So I just wanna blend that out. I think that's kind of ugly. Those questions were from Dina and Rose. Oh, and those questions were for Dina and from Dina and Rose. So thanks for asking, guys. I really love it when you guys ask questions, especially live, because sometimes I I don't know what to say next. <laughs> And I want to make sure that I'm saying things that are relevant to what we're doing. So you guys asking questions kind of keeps me on track. I'm just getting a little bit more white. Who had a question, Vince? Tammy asked what brush could she use for the cloud brush? Tammy asked what can she use in place of a cloud brush? Anything. If, if you want to try and do the same technique I'm doing, you just want to make sure that if you start scrubbing with a brush that you dedicate that brush to scrubbing because scrubbing with a brush can destroy it. So you could scrub with a brush one time and ruin it. I mean, for any other purpose. So it really doesn't matter. But like I said before, there's a million ways that you can do clouds. I'm just taking that tiny bit. We'll put a cloud top there because it was super dark under there. There's a million ways you can do clouds. I mean, I saw Bob Ross make clouds with a fan brush. That was like magic. <laughs> I, I tried to do clouds with a fan brush and I just ended up feeling like a, a four-year-old in my first art class. So, but you can do whatever you want. You can use any brush you want. I'm gonna take another layer of white down just because I wanna make sure that um, I don't have to bring my ground up too high to cover that. And I'm, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom of the canvas, but if you're not sure where you're going to put your ground, you can go ahead and take it all the way to the bottom. I'm just making sure that my sky comes down far enough so I don't have to worry about it when I'm putting the ground in. Do we have any other questions, Vince? Nothing right now? Okay, well I'm almost done here. And then I'm probably gonna mute you for a second because you don't wanna hear my blow dryer screaming. It's, my blow dryer is seriously loud. And I just wanna dry this. So I'm not dragging a lot of white into the ground. I want the base color of my ground to be very true. I don't want it to be muted with the white and I wanna keep it pretty dark so I don't I want to make sure that this white is dry, but I'll zoom you out. Hang on, I got to clean my brush first. Remember, the longest your brush should ever sit in the water is just long enough to clean it. So clean it, rinse it. I need a paper towel. Timothy asks if you have a, a you know, starter kit with paint and brushes. Do I have a starter kit with paint and brushes? I don't. I do have a brush starter kit. Well, it's the detail brushes. Um, and my cloud and flat brushes. And those are both on my website at paintingwithjane.com. And there's a couple brushes that we'll be using here today that, um, that I do not have available yet, but I'm hoping they're here pretty quick. So keep your eyes open for those. In the meantime, if you don't have them, just use, I'll kind of show you what you can use in place of them or, you know, different ways that you can do it. So I am gonna mute you real quick and dry this. So give me, give me just a second. Okay, we are back and Gwen said that this was a dreadful sky and I have to agree. Thank you, Gwen. So, okay, so that's dry and we're gonna go ahead and get started on our ground. And I just went up with this stupid tripod again. Maybe in another five years, I'll figure out how to, to work my 
tripod. Ooh. Don't get sick, guys. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on the ground. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm going to get, uh, yeah, I need a little more ultramarine. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of ultramarine out where I already had it because I don't care if I get a little bit of brown in this. We're going to do the ground, so that's okay. And I'm going to use my cadmium yellow medium. This is the actual cadmium one, not the cadmium free, but I have been buying the cadmium free ones and they're pretty awesome. So if you have avoided the heavy body cadmiums because of the cadmium, the cadmium free ones are awesome. I'm gonna get out quite a bit. We're probably gonna go through a bit of that paint. And I think I'm gonna start with my half inch, nope, sorry, my one inch flat brush, which is, like I said, available on my website. That's a really loud jet. Wet it in my jar and wipe it on the edge. So you know what's funny, you guys, is I have people who, I have my cloud brushes and, and these flat brushes in a set, and I have people who buy the set because they want the cloud brushes and then they get them and they use this brush and this is the one that they come back to me <laughs> and rave about. It's a pretty awesome brush. Okay, so I am going to get some ultramarine. As you can tell, I'm picking up a little brown. I don't really care. Ultramarine, loading up with it and just a little bit of yellow. I want this first green to be very, very dark. I'm going to use the edge of my brush and just kind of decide where my hill is going to be. I'm going to come up over here, up a little bit, just a very soft rise. And then we'll kind of slowly come back down here. Just very, very gentle. I think that's probably good. Let's throw a little more yellow in there. And now I'm turning my brush flat to go back and forth. Never try to draw a line like I did there using your brush flat because when you press a brush flat, the bristles, you know, the more pressure you put on it, the bristles spread out. And so if you're trying to make a straight line and you push, those bristles are widening, your line is getting out of control. But when you use the tip of your brush, it doesn't matter how hard you push, the bristles aren't going to get longer. So start with the tip of the brush to draw the line, move to the flat of the brush to fill it in. How's everyone doing? Am I going too fast for anybody or confusing you? People are loving the clouds. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. See, so I love to use gesso when I'm scrubbing, like I did up there. But then kind of the flip side to that is it takes more effort to <laughs> fill in when I'm not scrubbing. So this part is going to take me just a little bit more effort than usual. But I think it looks nice. It ends up looking a little bit smoother than without the gesso, without the additional gesso. All right. So there's our first color, just kind of the base color for our, our field. Wash my brush off real quick. And I need to gather my thoughts and see what we're doing next. See, when I do recorded videos, I get to just do all this part <laughs> and edit it out so you don't have to sit there and watch it. And I don't know where my painting went so that I could look at it. Hey, Vince, can you grab the canvas and put it up on that easel back there so I can see it? Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit more burnt umber. You want to show it to them? Mm -mm. All right, so I think before we start adding any highlights or anything, I'm going to do the road. Let me see if I can move this so it's not 
quite so angled for you guys. Maybe that's a little better. Let's just block in the road. Now this road is gonna look horrible and I am probably gonna make some huge changes to it later. And so I tell you that because if your road after this part looks terrible and you're like, ah, what have I done? I've already messed it up. Don't worry about it because we're gonna change it later. I am gonna get, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just going to stick with, I'm going to go with my number six filbert. And I wet it in my jar. Margie has a question. One sec. I'll get, Margie, I'll get to your question in one second. I'm going to get just a little bit of white and I'm going to mix it in with some brown just to get kind of a, a preliminary color. I threw a little blue into it just because I feel like burnt umber is really kind of a phony brown, like... It reminds me of like Hershey's chocolate. It's like, we're really trying to look like chocolate. So we're like really, really brown. That's what burnt umber looks like to me. So I like to put a little bit of the ultramarine in it to gray it down a bit. So for the road, it really doesn't matter where your road goes. In fact, the end of my road is almost gonna be insinuated at the end. I'm gonna put it in first, but it's, it's gonna disappear. So I think I'm gonna have it kind of right here. I'm gonna use the tip of my filbert and just kind of sketch, bring it to the side. Can you even see that? Yeah, a little bit. We'll bring it this way. Now here, this is important. To make this not look like it's going like straight up a hill, Notice that my angle is very soft. If it comes like down like that, it's gonna look weird. So it's just very gently sloping off this way. And then to get it to come back toward us, we're gonna have a tight angle. See how tight that angle is? And we'll have this one come way out here. And I know you can barely see that. Like I said, this is just kind of blocking it in. Clear out here. And then as it comes around, it gets more narrow. Don't forget that. I see that a lot where we forget that as things get closer to us, they get wider. As things move away, they get more narrow. So I'll see like a road that's like this wide at the front and all the way in the back, it might go down to about that wide that's gonna pull it a lot closer to us. So my second piece of the road, cause we have like wheel ruts, I'm just gonna kinda of come off of this shape so I can get my bearings. I'm gonna pull it beyond it just a little bit. Same angle and about like that. Then we can widen them out. So I'm gonna widen them out remembering that they get more narrow as they move away. Okay, I'm sorry, what is Margie's question? Oh, she just wondered if blue and white would work to do a sunny sky instead of sun. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, she wanted to know if she could use just blue and white to do like a sunny sky, if she didn't want it to look stormy. Absolutely, you can do anything you want. Absolutely anything you want. Okay, do you see how dramatic the width is there? So down here, my road is about like that. But then right here where it bends, it's about the width of my brush. So it, it changes quite dramatically, quite quickly. And that's gonna help push it way into the distance. Let's fill out the other side. And then we'll move on. We'll just let our road kind of sit here and dry for a minute. We can start on the other parts. Widen that out. Not only is the road getting more narrow as it moves away, but the section between the road, it gets more narrow and wider. So right here, you don't want to maintain like a quarter of an inch width between these two parts of the road from here all the way back it also is gonna be wider in the front and more narrow in the back. 
and we will absolutely be making changes to that when we come back to it and uh, as we start filling in the grass we'll probably lose parts of the road and have to redefine it and change its shape so my road is completely imperfect I'm okay with it and you should be too clean out my brush Okay, I am gonna go to, this is my half inch filbert. And you guys have not, well, you might have seen this. I don't know if I've used it or not yet in a video, but this is just my sample one, so you can tell it doesn't have my name on it or anything. Um, I have ordered them, so they should be here very, very soon. But I'm using this, you can use like my half inch flat, like this brush, if you, don't have the the filberts the reason i'm not using this one today is i want this to be very very soft to be a very soft look and because the bristles on this one are stiffer and more square i would get more uh, brush stroke lines so i'm going to use this one you could also just use the number eight filbert it's just going to take you a little longer to kind of blend it and that's okay too so I'm gonna get some blue and some yellow and a little extra water so it's nice and smooth. And I'm gonna use the edge, so just right there on the edge and just kind of start defining where my colors are. Just short brush strokes. They're a little longer right here where I'm on the horizon. And we have another question. Marty said, I don't understand your road. Does it have grass as in a medium or two roads? But I don't think you're finished with it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not finished with the road yet, Marnie. Um, it's, it's almost like wheel ruts. So there's a little bit of grass growing up in the middle. You know, but do it however makes sense to you. If you're not familiar with roads like that and that doesn't make sense to you, then, you know, do it however you like. See that that I picked up was a little bit more yellow and that's okay because this is grass. It's, you know, wild. And so it might look a little different from place to place. But see, I'm using these kind of short brush strokes and each one overlaps. See that? How they're all overlapping. And then where I have like kind of hard lines between the two colors, I can come back with just softer pressure and just kind of smear that. So right there. And if it's just not blending, man, that sky must have been a little wet still because I am picking up a little bit of white. If it's still just not blending, pick up some of your darker color and there. Now remember that m the vast majority of the time you get to say how something moves by your brush strokes. So you don't want to come and fill in this hill with up and down brush strokes because that's not going to look like a hill. You want your brush strokes to follow how you feel like your hill moves and you get to decide that. So here, because we're kind of at the top, so my brush stroke is almost arced a little bit. As I start coming to this way, it's kind of arced the other way, kind of comes down and swoops over. And that helps it say that the hill is moving downward right here. See, like that. Carrie wants to know if you're going to put a creepy tree on it. Uh, Carrie wants to know if I'm going to put a creepy tree on it. Um, he's creepy-ish. The tree in the image that I showed you is not my favorite. I did that late the other night just in an effort to get it done so that I could get an image out. And the next morning I looked at it and was like, oh, that poor tree looks like it's about to fall down the hill. So... This tree won't be falling down the hill. And there's discussion in chat that this painting so far is reminding them of John Denver's Country Road. Aww. Everybody said that the painting reminds them of John Denver's Country Road. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. I'm not getting too specific with my colors just yet. Mostly I'm defining the shape with my brush strokes. I am putting a little bit of effort into, you know, it's darker over here. It's a little lighter over here. But... I'm not trying to get it right the first time around. I think sometimes we get frustrated 
when we're like, oh, it's gotta be darker right here and lighter right here. And so we try and do that and get it right the first time. And when it doesn't come out right the first time, then we get frustrated and we quit. But remember guys, you can do as many layers as you want. You can always come back and add more. Let's keep it a little darker back here. I'm getting rant emojis. <laughs> I love rant emojis. So here real quick at the road, I'm not, I'm not stopping like right at the road. I'm kind of, it's overlapping my road a little bit. If this is like an old country road, the, the line between the road and the grass may not be very well defined. You know, as the road gets used less and the grass grows a little wider, wilder, a little extra water. I'm really just picking up yellow now. I still have green and blue on there. And no, I don't want to do that yet. I was going to start really working on the highlights, but we still have to do the other side too. So same thing, a little darker up here to the horizon. Brush strokes indicating the movement of the ground. So if my brush stroke goes down, my hill is moving down. If my brush stroke goes up, then the hill is going up. Let's get a little more yellow there for this part. A Mr. Moon request. A Mr. Moon request. I don't know where he is. He's being really quiet right now. See, look, I just went straight over top of my road. Don't sweat your road. You just really want to know where the road is at this point so that you're highlighting in the right place. You know, you don't want to spend all this time doing these amazing highlights and then put your road over top of it and lose your favorite part of the highlights or feel like you have to put your road in a different awkward spot because otherwise you're going to lose your highlights. So that's why we put the road there. I'm going to get just a bit of this darker color and this indicates some of that in the, the little grassy area between the ruts of the road. A little bit lighter, still kind of horizontal, so it's going over the road on either side. Break up that line. Let's get some of this darker green. I'm just saying that it's in there. I'm not trying to keep very, especially in the back here, I'm not trying to be very specific in saying that road is two separate parts. Your brain knows it's two separate parts because it sees it right here and it sees that it's going off in the distance. So it understands that it can't see everything. I am covering that bit of the road back here because I feel like it looks awkward the way it's kind of going up the hill. So who knows where that road goes, disappears around the corner somewhere. It's off in the distance. There, I think that's good. Now I think we can go ahead and start highlighting. So I'm just gonna, I just wiped my brush off on a paper towel. I didn't clean it. A little extra water and some yellow. And I kind of, almost put like a point of light here rather than really trying to say, okay, well the light would be hitting here or here. So you know, like when there's a break in the clouds on a stormy day and all of a sudden there's this bright spot on the ground. That's kind of what I'm going for here. So still just using the tip of my brush, just kind of back and forth, still going over the edge of my road, up my hill. Very light pressure. Can you see how much my brush is bending? It's really only bending about like that. That's really what I'm doing here. And the round shape of the filbert is helping make sure that I don't get these like hard points. And I'll just let that kind of fade out as the paint wears off. Make sure you stand back and look at it as you go because you may be standing here in front of it looking at it thinking yeah that looks awesome and then you stand back and look at it and you're like 
not quite what I was going for. And, you know, vice versa. Marianne asked what level of difficulties is painting? Who asked that, Vince? Marianne. Marianne? Marianne wants to know how difficult this painting is. Um, I, I will probably put it in my level one. I don't think it's terribly difficult. You know, had we spent a little bit more time really focusing on clouds, then I might put it in level two. But it's really hard for me to answer that question because, you know, I've seen brand new painters do things that a lot of people have struggled with for a long time. And I've seen people who have been painting for, you know, quite a while struggle with very basic concepts. So everybody's different. So right here in the middle, I'm just kind of almost squidging it in. We don't need anything real distinct. I'm just getting some of that lighter color in there. Everybody's different and everybody's going to, you know, struggle with something that somebody else might find easy or you know, whatever. So I really do have a hard time answering those questions about levels of difficulty. But, and you have to remember that you're asking me and I think that if I can do it, it's easy. So, <laughs> so my answer is going to be they're, they're all pretty easy. Just a little bit more. Let's bring in just a pop right up here that's going to be kind of near our tree. And, you know, don't worry if you get overboard with your highlights. That's another thing I see so much, you know, is people are like, oh, I, I, I put too many highlights on. Well, if you feel like you put too many highlights on, then let it dry and add some dark back in. Why stop? There's no reason to stop. I want to really darken. Let's see. I need some more ultramarine. I want to make sure these corners here where our poppies are going to go is fairly dark. Not super, super dark, just like a dark green. So just never settle for highlights you don't like, is what I'm saying. And I know I say that to you guys a lot because it's true. Bryce has a question. Bryce has a question. Can I do this in monochromatic and just pop the color of the tree and uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Bryce asked, can I do this monochromatic and just pop the colors of the trees and flowers? Heck yeah. And I want to see that when you do it, because that sounds incredible. I'm all for monochromatic paintings, man. I love, you know, black and white or, and I love chromatic black and white, you know, making black out of, out of something else. Just pulling that darker color there. It's easier for me to kind of see what I'm doing. Like I always tell you guys to stand back, but I can't really do that a lot while I'm broadcasting. But when I look at my computer here and see what I'm doing, it's kind of the same effect as standing back. So I can see that I have a line there that is not quite as obvious when I'm standing directly in front of it. There we go. Much better. And then we need to darken this just a bit right here in the front. But, I mean, I think the hardest part of this painting, I think, is the perspective of the road. And not because that's difficult, but because our brains fight us. Okay, so your brain says, okay, the road is the same like if it's 10 feet across here, it's 10 feet across over there. And so it tries to make you believe that it's 10 feet across or whatever, all the way back. Even though your eye, when you look at it, you know what you're seeing is it's super wide here and it's super narrow right back there. And so there's kind of this fight there between your eye and your brain. And it really boils down to just kind of training, training your brain to understand, yes, but we're gonna say that it's smaller in the back because it's gonna look, it's gonna look normal. It's gonna look like it's the same width all the way back. And your brain doesn't believe that. So just work on that. You know, if, you, if you're looking at it and you're like, oh, that looks like it's going uphill, then it's probably not widening out properly 
or your angles, you know, as it comes, as it moves around, your angles might be too sharp or if it curves like here, your curve might be too round. If it's too round, too slight, it is going to appear that the hill is moving. It's close to you and it's moving uphill. But if you have a sharp curve, that's going to say that this road is flat and it's got a gentle curve up ahead, even though to you it looks like a hairpin curve. I'm just adding just a little bit of optical illusion rant. Optical illusion rant, yeah. I'm just adding a little bit of some variation in the color here. So see, like I said, you don't have to settle for highlights you don't like. Just keep changing it. My only caution here is if you're going along and you keep changing things, which is perfectly acceptable, be aware that after you add so many layers of paint, you might start removing some. If that happens, just stop, let it dry and then come back. Okay. I'm not experiencing any of that yet. So I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to pop a little bit more highlight right here. And then I think, I think I'll be done. So see, I just plopped down some solid yellow, picked up just a hint of my green, just to kind of drag, drag those lines out a little. I think that's okay. I think that's about what I'm looking for. I was gonna use, well, I might still. I might come back. I did on my other one, the one that I showed you, used my number eight filbert with some yellow and white, so a very, very light color, and kind of made it super bright right here next to the road. So I might do that, we'll see. Uh, let's work on our road. I'm gonna zoom you in for this one. I hate this tripod. Okay, let's zoom you in there a little bit. So you can see what we're doing. All right. So in fact, yeah, I am going to go to my number eight filbert and I wet it in my jar and my poor filbert that is super ugly. I told myself I was going to start using my pretty filbert, but I can't. I like my ugly filbert. A little bit of blue, a little bit of brown. That blue is just there to gray down the brown a bit. A little bit of white. I want to keep this color pretty dark, but I don't want it like black. A little point of water to kind of smooth things out. Now, I'm just going to use the very tip of my filbert. I'm not going to use it flat in here. Now this is another place where your brain is going to want to fight with you. Okay. It's going to want to come in here and say, Oh, let's, highlight and shadow up and down like that because that's the way the road moves. But the ground is, you, you really want to kind of follow the horizon. So if it helps you when you're doing this, look at the bottom edge of your canvas and make sure that all your brush strokes pretty much follow the edge of the canvas, not the shape of the road. So what I mean is I'm going to come in here and just kind of sketch out where the edge of my road is. Okay. So I put in my little darker spot and then I'm going to drag it into the center of the road. See how my brush stroke is following the edge of the canvas. I'm going side to side. I'm not going up. That's going to help your eye push the road flat. It is now a flat road. If my brush stroke goes up again, it's going to say it's going to, it's going to kind of look like a wall. It's not going to look like a flat road. So, Again, you can kind of follow it right there just to, you know, drop in that color, but then to smooth it, follow the bottom edge of the canvas. Here we can start covering up some of that green that, that got dragged out into the road. Maybe I'll just come back here and just indicate that was more than an indication. That's all right indicate a little bit of some darker spots in there 
Did we have any other questions, Vince? It sounded like you were getting ready to say something. We have shout outs from Ireland, South Africa, and Denmark. Oh my gosh. We have people from Ireland, South Africa, Denmark, all over and the Nebraska. place. And Nebraska. Tennessee. <laughs> you guys, I could get used to doing this live. You know, sometimes when I record, again, follow the bottom edge of the canvas. Sometimes when I record, you know, I, there's an amount of disconnect that I feel from you guys. But being able to talk to you real time while I'm painting kind of helps me understand. Sometimes, you know, sometimes people ask me questions after the fact, you know, about a technique or, or whatever, and I don't really understand what they're asking. But when you guys can ask real time, that's really helpful to me. So I like being able to have that. I'm going to grab a little bit more white and just mix it in with that color I was just using. Just want a lighter version. If I accidentally pick up some of that yellow, I'm not worried about it. That might be too light, but we'll see. We'll start with that and see. Now, I just kind of decided on one side of the road being darker than the other side. You can do it however you like. So I did this left side on both pieces of the wheel rut darker, which is going to kind of help say that the wheel rut is curved a bit. Back here, because the road turns, I switched it so the dark part is on the other side. It doesn't really matter. You can't really see it back there anyway. Again, following the edge of my canvas, I'm almost scribbling. Can you see that? There's not a lot of paint coming off of my brush there. I'm just going like that. And because my brush is super old and just like beat, <laughs> it's scratching rather than, you know, laying down a nice solid line of paint. And that is why I refuse to stop using <laughs> this brush. I love that. If I, you know, if I need a nice sharp line, I've got another brush, but I like my cruddy brush. It does what I want it to do. Still just kind of laying it down on the opposite side of the road, straight out horizontally to blend it in with the other side. Don't worry about your grass. Just like when we laid in the grass, I said, don't worry about your road. Don't worry about your grass. I think I will come back with my number six to just um, kind of fix that up a little. Since my number eight is really rough and doesn't give me a, a, a solid line. We have another question. Butcher's Wife asks, when Jane mentions her number one flat, etc., what are the corresponding brush numbers? One inch, I mean, one inch flat brush. What are the corresponding brush numbers? There aren't. So um, the question, the butcher's wife asked, you know, when I, when I say like my one inch flat brush, what are the corresponding numbers? There aren't. And part of that is because every line of brushes is different. There is not, there's not a standard system down. You know, a number 12 in one brush might be a big fat brush. Number 12 in another line, it might be a, a smaller one or a huge brush. There's, there's no real solid answer there. The reason I have my larger brushes, see I just picked up a little bit of white. We're just gonna kind of scratch in a bit of a highlight, not even all the way up. See how I kind of skip some parts. The reason I have my large brushes numbered like one inch, half inch, things like that is to help avoid that confusion. So they are the actual measurements. These smaller ones, the reason I go with the, the numbering conventions rather than measurements is because like the difference between an eight and a six of my filbert, for example, it might be like a sixteenth of an inch. And are you going to pull out a tape measure and measure everyone to make sure that you know, you picked up the one with the sixteenth of an inch different. I doubt that. So that's why I went with the numbering conventions for the smaller ones. I actually hate numbering conventions because 
you know, when everybody's using different brands of brushes, the numbering conventions don't mean anything. I think if you're using something besides my brushes, just use something that looks generally the same size. It, it really doesn't matter. It's not like if you use, you know, a number 10 filbert here or somebody else's number eight that's actually not the same size as mine that your whole painting is gonna fall apart. That's not the case at all. Just use what you've got. Not too bad. It's kind of looking like a muddy road, which is good. That's kind of what I want. I'm going to pull just a little bit of a darker color here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to wash that off. There's a lot of white in that brush. I want a bit of a darker color. And then we are going to do just a little bit more on the grass to push the road back down because since the road overlaps our grass, particularly in the light areas, it kind of looks like the road is sitting on top of the grass. So we're going to fix that. All right. Dark. With just a hint of white in it. Can you even see that? Okay. All right. Again, just the very tip just a very light scribble just to get rid of some of those areas that I felt like were too much. Make sure that you go nice and dark, like right here, because that helps drop the road down. See how right here on this side where it's darker, the, the road looks like it's down lower, like the grass is above it. And that is all just because we have a dark color there. So go nice and dark. I think we're almost done with the road. Any other questions, Vince? Yeah, people from so many countries that I can't even remember them all. Oh, is everybody listing where they're from? <clears throat> and then we've got Trinidad, France, Canada, Iran. Oh, we've got some people from Iran and Trinidad, Trinidad Australia. and Australia. That's so awesome. France. You guys make me so happy that you're all here. I was so worried. I was like, what if nobody comes? Nobody comes to watch and then I'll cry alone. So <laughs> I'm glad that didn't happen. Okay, let's finish up the grass, which I think will help out our road a little bit. And I know that the road kind of looks messy, but when we zoom out, I think it'll look more like a road to you. I'm just cleaning off my number eight because I am going to stick with that. And I think I'm just going to get a little point of white. Just a little point. That's too much. There we go. And I'm going to pull out about the same amount of yellow and just mix them together. If I accidentally get a hint of that green in there, it's okay. I just want a very light color. And I'm still just going to use the tip of my brush. Right here, you see I can kind of clean up those little areas where my road got out of control. Pull that down right to the dark color, because again, that's going to help it seem like that drops down. Question. We have another question. <clears throat> Tony asks, could you underpaint it with another color to get a different effect? Yeah, so Tony asks if, if I underpainted with a different color, uh, could I get a different effect? And yeah, absolutely. I think particularly in the sky, because when you scrub the way I did there, um, it, it makes the paint quite thin. And so whatever is underneath is going to show a little bit more. I am going to use my brush flat here and just kind of lay it down a bit, a bit thicker. I thought that was looking just way too thin and kind of yucky there. Um, I think because I'm adding so many layers and, you know, everything through here, through the ground, I don't know that we would see much difference with an underpainting, but maybe because the ultramarine is quite transparent. So I just pulled a little ultramarine in there, kind of got another green. Just kind of start blending those a little bit. Oh, much better. And you can use your finger to smear. Never be afraid to 
smear paint with your finger, you guys. I don't know if you can see my nails. Yesterday, I had a play day. I never have play days. They are my favorite, too. So yesterday, I was here in my studio, and I just painted all day long. I didn't think about anything. I wasn't painting anything in particular. I wasn't painting for anybody or you know, anything. I wasn't judging. I was just painting and having fun and I ended up doing quite a bit of finger painting. <laughs> so that's why I look like a, my fingernails look like a four-year-old who's been in the sandbox all day. Just a hint of that brighter color over here too. The yellow and white. I still have that green so I can kind of go onto the side to start blending it in. Oh, let's turn you a little bit so you can actually see that part, huh? I think, now that I'm looking at this, we need to add just a hint of some lighter color just right here where the road turns. That's better. It's very vague, you know, what's going on back there. Let your viewer kind of decide what they see. Maybe they see a road that continues around a bend. Maybe they feel like they can still see the road and that it comes all the way up the hill. Let your viewer kind of decide. You don't have to, you don't have to tell them 100% what to see. I feel like I'm kind of losing my, my colors there. So I might need to clean off my brush and step away from it for a minute. We'll see how this part goes. Let's get a hint of that going on in here. See, sometimes when I get into a zone where I'm like really thinking about what I'm doing and planning out my next move and everything, then I end up getting quiet, which is why we had time lapse in <laughs> so many videos. That was where I just had nothing to say because I was practically painting with my tongue hanging out of my mouth in concentration. I think that's good for now. I'm gonna let it sit and while we work on the other elements, I'll kind of judge it from there and then we may end up coming back and touching up a couple things. You know, we still have a bit of, like our road looks kind of on top of the grass right here, but we're gonna put the flowers there. So I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time doing anything else right there because it's just gonna get painted over. So let's zoom you back out. How's everyone doing? Oh look, I got my tripod right the first time. Yay! I really like the zoom. Good. See, now I feel like that road just zoomed out a little bit. It looks so much better than when I'm like right down in here painting it. And it has a lot more dimension looking at it at a distance. To me, it really looks like it's dropped down a bit from the rest of the ground. So I am, I think I'm happy with the road. Let's work on our tree. So we're gonna put our tree right in here. Now on the image that I showed you, let me just bring it back up again real quick. I think that our poor tree kind of looks like it's about to fall down the left side of the hill because I wasn't paying attention to where I put it. So you wanna be really aware of where you're putting it. So let's go ahead and talk about that and kind of plan that out. I'm gonna use, 
I think I'm gonna use my number eight to start with. But what I'm gonna do is, I know usually we kind of start with the trunk and the branches, but this tree is in the distance and we're gonna put very little energy into creating details on the trunk and branches here. So I'm actually gonna start with the foliage, with the top of the tree. We'll do the trunk after. So we wanna make sure that we're putting the tree on the high point. That's what I didn't do properly on the other one, kind of put it off to the side a little bit. So let's see, the high point of my hill I feel like is right about here. So my foliage is gonna go right about in there. I'm gonna, I need more blue. Again, going through a lot of blue. Okay, again, I'm gonna do my blue-brown mixture, so kind of a chromatic black. Uh, there we go. So some ultramarine, some brown. Just get a nice dark color. It doesn't matter if it leans more one way or the other. I am gonna pull just a little bit of yellow into it because it is a tree, so we want a hint of a green tone to it. Okay, so my high point is here. I need to step back a little bit, kind of get behind my camera. And I don't wanna put my tree too high up because the bigger it is, the closer it's gonna seem. So I'm gonna keep it kind of small and pretty low. So I'm just using the tip of my filbert. Just gonna make like little dabs, okay? Make sure the high point of that tree is right over the high point of the ground. This is just the underpainting of your tree. You can keep it a little bit smaller than you actually want your tree to be because you can make it bigger when we start adding the foliage, like the, the highlights and everything. Mm, not too bad. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to my number six for the, the details of the tree, which I say I use the word details loosely. It's gonna be very little details. So number six, and I'm just gonna get blue, just ultramarine, I don't want that brown anymore. I need more yellow. Notice I keep getting more paint, guys. I get asked a lot about wasting paint. You know, people saying, I waste so much paint. Don't put out as much paint as you think you need. Put out less paint than you think you need because you can always get more. But if you waste it, then it's gone. There's nothing wrong with going back and getting more paint. Okay, I'm gonna mix up kind of a dark green. It's mostly blue. It's just got a hint of that yellow in there. And then see, I'm kind of coming through and scraping it up. So I've got a little bit of a ball of that paint on the end of my brush. Again, I'm just gonna use the edge, kind of like we did on the ground with the larger filbert. And I'm just gonna kind of start tapping and break it up a bit. You can go outside of your shape. It's gonna look a little more natural if, you know, some of the pieces don't connect or, you know, it's a little bit weird. Don't worry about covering up all of that darker color either. I mean, that's why we put it there. So. You know, there's no reason to try and cover all of it. You can even still see the sky through some of it and that's perfectly okay. A little extra water, I'm just gonna pull some more yellow into that mixture. A little bit of a lighter color, that was too much yellow. There we go. Scoop up some of that again. And we'll just add some highlights. Just kind of decide where your highlights are. Again, this is a stormy sky, so we don't have like the sun that's right overhead. We're covered in clouds, there's a little break and the sun is kind of shining through. So I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, I don't really care. I kind of feel like that gives us the freedom to, you know, put our light source wherever we want it. Who cares? Just yellow now, but I still have the green and everything. I'm just gonna put it pop a few in here that are brighter. I'm not gonna go overboard with it. It is still a dark day. We've got a few spots that are catching a bit of light, but ultimately it's a cloudy, stormy day. 
And if we get too much, it's way too, way too highlighted, we can just get our dark color again, come back and just right over that bottom edge. Even right up in here. See? Yeah, I like that. Much better. I'm going to keep this area pretty dark right here. Just kind of tapping with the edge of that filbert. I think that's good. Uh, let's add one little bit of highlight right there. Good. Okay. Now the trunk. And we're almost done. We just have the flowers after this. And the flowers are going to be, I think the flowers are pretty easy. Even if you don't like the fan brush, I think the flowers will be easy. I'm going to go to my number three round. Let's get that dark color again, the blue-brown mixture. Maybe I'll lean it a little bit more to the side of the brown since it is a tree trunk. Now also remember, as things get farther away from us, not only do they get smaller, they get less detailed. So we're not gonna go highlighting our tree trunk. We're not gonna get super crazy with little tiny branches. We are just going to indicate, indicate, indicate. And I wanna give my tree kind of a wild trunk. I don't want it to just be straight up and down. So, I'm going to start right about here, the center of the shape under it, and kind of pull it sideways. Maybe it comes up just a little bit on the ground. And then there's like a little bit of a branch that kind of comes off of it. But do it however you like. If you don't like a gnarly old tree like that, you can do a straight up and down tree. There's nothing wrong with a straight up and down tree. See, I'm just kind of nudging some branches on here. Make sure that your branches can hold up your tree. So I'm kind of taking them out rather than just a stick going right up into it. These branches are spread wide. So we're gonna spread some little branches here kind of wide. Let's see, very, very simple here, guys. That's, I think that's really about it. I'm gonna just kinda nudge that little root up there a bit. And maybe I'll cover the base of it just a teeny tiny bit. Make it look a little more natural. A little brown or blue, a little yellow. And just kinda right there. A little more yellow. There. I think I like that. All right, we are ready to do our flowers. So let me clean off my brush. Was that tree creepy enough for you? I know he's not really a very creepy tree. He's kind of a sweet tree, but he's got a little bit of a gnarly trunk, which is cool. People are digging it. People are digging it. Awesome, thank you. Don't get sick, guys. I need like a fully automated tripod, not one with a stupid hand crank. <laughs> okay. You'd think I was a professional YouTuber as good as I am at this. They have those? I guess they have those. Okay, so I'm gonna do one side of the flowers at a time so that I can be nice and zoomed in for you here. When I go to do the other side, I'll zoom out, okay? So I am gonna start with, I'm gonna need some more blue actually again. So let me do that. So I'm using my fan brush. If you don't have my fan brush, which as of today you don't because I don't have them yet, but <laughs> you can use any fan brush or whatever you're comfortable with making grasses. Just because I'm using a fan brush doesn't mean that you have to, okay? So I'm just gonna wet it in my jar there we go and then a fan brush holds a lot of water you wouldn't think that it really does wipe it pretty good 
on the edge there. And I've got my blue and my yellow. And some of you may have seen this before. The best way to load a fan brush is not like we load a typical brush where we kind of pull the paint out and squish it like that. So it'll get in the middle and that's it. <laughs> and if you're trying to mix colors, you'll just get stripes. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that my fan brush is in both colors and I'm gonna squidge it side to side, squidge it, flip it over, squidge it. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more on the blue side. See, squidge it. That's how we load up a fan brush and how we mix colors. I'm sorry, Vince, what did you say? Made up squidge it? Squidget? It's a Jane word, and if I were doing an edited video right now, it would have a trademark symbol next to it. Squidge it. Okay, so I have my nice dark color. Now, don't be intimidated by the fan brush, guys. I'm only gonna be using, I'm really only gonna use about that much of this brush, okay? I'm not putting pressure. That's how much pressure I'm gonna put. That, I'm not going with it, just like that. So, we're gonna come in here with the tip of that brush, and I'm just scratching in some grass, see that? Again, just like with the hill, as things move away from us, they get smaller. That goes for our grass too. So as our grass moves away, let's flip it over and use the other corner. As our grass moves away, it's gonna get shorter. Let it overlap your road a little bit. Now you can't really see that because that color blends in, but we're gonna do a couple, a couple different colors. Let's pull more blue in there. There we go, that's a little bit darker. See, nice short grasses back there. Nice short grasses. See the pressure on my brush? I'm not like mashing it down on there. Don't mash it. Just scratch it. That's what we're doing is scratching. Scratch. Okay, I think that's probably good. I'm gonna squidge it into the yellow. Let's get a nice light color now. Just so we have some variation in the grasses. Different types of grasses or, you know, some are, maybe some get more water than others. They're older or younger. So there's gonna be some variation there. I know that one part is really ugly, but I'm not worried about it. That's happening because I ended up putting too much pressure on my brush because I'm kind of painting like at a weird angle. There we go. Okay, I think that's good for our grass. I'm gonna go back to my number six filbert and we're gonna get two new colors. We're gonna get some alizarin crimson. We don't need a lot. And some cadmium red medium. And these two colors mixed together make like one of my favorite reds ever. I'm gonna set them right next to each other. I know they don't look like they would make a great red. You know, the alizarin looks really purpley. The cadmium red is almost kind of orangey, but they just make an excellent color. Okay, number six, Filbert. I'm gonna grab a little bit of both and loosely mix it together. I don't need it to be perfectly blended. It's just kind of marbled on there. Now let's talk about how we're gonna do our flowers because I know I'm gonna see a couple of things. I'm gonna see people who come in and do like this. You know, try and do very specific flowers. Give it a certain number of petals and they go around like this through the whole thing and then they end up with these very stiff looking flowers that are all spaced out very evenly. So what we're gonna do instead is Sometimes I'm gonna tap on the edge of my brush. Sometimes it'll be flat, but that's a flower. That's a flower. That's a flower. Flower. 
okay? So sometimes it's made of one brush stroke, sometimes it's made of two, four, whatever. But again, remember, as they get further, they get smaller. So right here in the front, I'm gonna go, that's a flower, that's poppy, or two, who knows? Maybe one can touch another one that you've already put down. It's, it's gonna look a little more natural if, first of all, they go off the bottom edge of your canvas, and second of all, if they touch each other. I see a lot of times, you know, people will say, I painted a field of flowers, I don't like my flowers, what's wrong with them? And none of them touch. You know, they, they all kind of avoid each other. And I think that makes things look really stiff. So don't be afraid to let your flowers touch. I'm almost being kind of random with this, but see how my brush changes position every time. I make a, I make a little dash, I roll my brush. I make a little dash, I roll my brush to a different position. Little globs of paint. You can do tons and tons of poppies or you can be really conservative with it and, and just do a few. Now we're starting to get back here. So my brushes, my brush strokes are a little bit smaller and they're not quite as defined. Like I'm really just kind of doing like one little dash, that's a flower. Make another one that touches it. Especially back here, I think it's important that they touch because otherwise they can look very mechanical, very polka dotty. I'm in my little zone again. Don't also don't make them fade out at the same spot. If you know if they all fade out right about two inches above the edge of the canvas, then you're gonna have like a hard line, and I almost have that. I'm gonna keep this back right about here. Maybe I'll take one more up right here, and then I'm gonna. Those got a little bigger, so I'm gonna just go ahead and make them a little bit bigger, and we'll take these out. About like that. I think that's good. So they're a little bit more staggered. Now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to dunk into, whoops, where are we? There we are. I just dunked right into the cadmium red, the brighter red. See how I have a little nub of it on the end there? And some of these are going to get a little swath of the cadmium red and look at how bright that makes it. Just a really pretty glow. I'm not trying to make new petals. I'm not highlighting all of them. I'm just doing it kind of randomly, whichever one I feel like I can reach from where my hand is planted. It might get one, it might not. I'm not paying attention to, you know, whether I put one on the one right next to it, none of that. Just placing some. So the alizarin crimson is quite transparent. So as it dries, it's gonna get a little bit darker. And the reason for that is because it is transparent and the green is gonna show through it. But the cadmium red in the heavy body paints, not in basics, is opaque. So it's gonna stay nice and bright. It's gonna continue to be a very pop color. Just little hints of it back here. Tiny, tiny little hints of it. No more questions? Oh, where's Mr. Moon? He's apparently sleeping. And in this house, when Mr. Moon is asleep, you, you let him sleep. So remember guys, before when he was at the studio with me and everybody would be like, he sounds lonely because <laughs> he would meow so much. Well, he's not lonely here because he is best friends with my 70 pound boxer and he has us. And so he's the farthest thing from lonely possible and he meows more here. 
than he did at the studio. So he's just a very loud cat. All right, one last thing we're gonna do to these poppies to really make them look like poppies. And then we're gonna move over to the other side and finish up over there. I'm gonna get some more of my blue-brown mixture, very dark. No green, no white, just blue-brown. Kind of a little blob, see it's kind of globbed on there. Maybe three, maybe a couple more than that, but I'm just gonna kind of touch. And that says, oh look, that's the center of a flower. Just kind of placing them almost randomly. Okay, I did three. Maybe we'll put the tiniest poke of one right there. And... I think that's good. We have a question? 2043 wanted to ask, how do you deal with being broken from being unable to afford paying supplies? How do you deal with not being able to afford paint supplies? Who asked that? 2043. 2043? Um, so I know there's nothing more frustrating than really wanting to do something and not having the, the means to do it. I understand that completely. When it comes to paint supplies though, I think, you know, get what you can afford. Just because I tell you craft paint is not art paint, it's not going to do what we need it to do. That doesn't mean that you can't use it. You know, if if that's all you can afford, like at the dollar store, craft paint and, you know, plastic brushes and paper, and those are your art supplies, then do it. You do whatever it is that you need to do that's going to satisfy that need to create. You know, you don't have to use quality art supplies, expensive art supplies in order to make any kind of art. You know, if, you, if you're gonna ask me what kind of art supplies are the best to get, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best to get. But that doesn't mean that everybody can afford that. So just get what you can afford. Get what you can get your hands on. Get what you can afford and, and just create. Do what you need to create. Okay, I mixed up a slightly lighter green than what we have going on here because I'm not gonna put flowers in the middle of the road because if cars driving over this every once in a while, it's probably gonna kill the flowers there. So, but I feel like it's just kind of flat looking there. So I'm just gonna almost scribble that. Yeah, that's much better. And then just kind of wipe out that back line with my finger. Let's do just a tiny bit of that right here too, just on the, right on the edge. Perfect, now we're ready to do our flowers. Actually, I'm gonna zoom you out while I do these flowers so that you can kind of get the, the big picture. Cause like I said, things look different out, you know, at a, at a wider view than they do at a tighter view. So see to me, I think that looks more like more like flowers now than it did all close up. So again, I'm just gonna get, squidge it into some green, two or three different colors of green, just to get some variation. Just the tip of my brush, just the corner. This side's not gonna have quite as much going on. It's a much smaller corner, but we'll get a bit in here. I'm gonna pull that back, remembering that my grasses are gonna get shorter as I move farther away. A little bit more yellow. This would typically be another time lapse. So Vince, <laughs> tell me something that's going on in chat, questions, or if somebody's following along, any comments they have about their painting. Oh, good heavens. Creative Christy wants to know about creative blocks. Friends, it's a thing. <laughs> and it happens. And there I guess there are people who don't go through it and I think that's magical cuz I don't understand that. But it happens and the number one thing because 
you know, I've done a lot of reading on what people do when they have creative blocks and so much of it, I'm like, that doesn't help me. <laughs> so it's hard for me to really say, here's what you do. But number one, this is a piece of advice that I think goes for anybody, anybody in the world who's ever gone through creative block. You cannot let it freak you out and bring you down. Okay. It's really easy to be like, I'm blocked. I'll never paint again, you know, and I feel like it's the end of the world. But after you've gone through it, you know, 20, 30 times in the last week, <laughs> you know, you, you start to realize, oh, this is just part of the process. This is, it, it just happens. And then one day it goes away. Um, so just take it as it comes because it will, and then it will go away. And I have found that the more that I stress about being blocked, the longer I'm blocked. So, you know, some of the things that I've heard people say that sometimes it works for me, sometimes not try a different medium. Uh, one thing that actually works really well for me, but it, it may not for you and that's okay too, is I'll revisit a technique or a painting, something that I've done many times, something that I'm really confident in, something that I just enjoy doing and I'll do that again. And, you know, just getting moving is what helps. You know, if, if you're just going to stand there in front of your easel and bemoan the fact that you're not coming up with any good ideas, then that's where you're going to stay. You won't come up with any ideas. You're never going to come up with ideas standing in front of an easel like this, staring at it, being irritated that you can't come up with any ideas. Never. That's never going to happen. So just start painting something and, you know, be receptive to ideas that might flow out of that. That's typically why I do. But don't, don't let it ruin you. It's really easy to, you know, the first time you get that artistic block is to just let it destroy you. You know what else I've noticed about, um, art blocks is that almost always after something really cool happens it's almost like it's almost like your brain is saving up all of your creative juices for something really big that's about to happen you know it's like no you can't have any ideas right now i'm i'm using all of your creativity just be patient cuz i have something awesome for you so that's what I've usually found. Question. Another question. Um, well, um, somebody has seen Mickey Mouse on your palette. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, too, in a couple places. Mickey Mouse on my palette. Sorry, I can't find who said it now in the chat. Oh. Um, Christy. Oh, Christy saw that. And, but a question, sorry. Okay, little centers in a couple spots and then we're done, guys. Avalon asks, is there a reason the right side of the curb of the road is wider than the left side? Oh, because I wasn't no, paying attention. Oh, so <laughs> Anita asked if there is a reason why one side of my road is wider than the other side. And maybe it's because I wasn't paying attention, but also I don't really care. Like. It's an old road, so it, you know, it might not be worn real evenly, but if that really bugs you and you've got that going on on yours, that's an easy fix. So I'm just going to get a little bit of a lighter color here. I'm not doing this because I care. <laughs> I'm doing this to demonstrate. First of all, I've got some grass that kind of got away from me there. Let's, that's a little bit better. And I could probably actually, how dark is this? Yeah, there we go. You know, sometimes I don't care about things like that. Like, I don't know if it bugs you, you know, 
you can certainly make sure that you fix things like that. Well, ruts I, are not always proportional. What, Vince? Ruts are not always proportional. Yeah, yeah. Well, ruts in the road, they're not always going to be proportional. Maybe the way the road is curved, whenever a car hits that, it kind of slides to one side or the other. I don't know. But anyway, so I'm pretty happy with it. I don't really have a good place to sign it, do I? Eh, yeah, I do. I'm going to get my cadmium red because I know it's going to show up nice and bright. I'm going to sign it right here in the poppies. There we go. No, no, you can't really see that. That's okay. So, what do you guys think? I want to hear now if anyone painted along with me. And if so, you know, were they able to finish with me or, you know, whatever. I want to hear your experience with that. Let's go ahead and jump over to here. I'll jump over into chat too and see if we have... Uh, Christy says, any advice on when you have ideas to put to canvas and can't figure out how to start? I have so many ideas but can't seem to get them from head to hand. <sighs> Again, that's another one of those things that everybody is different. Um, I know a lot of times people will sketch when they have ideas like that. I find that sketching ruins ideas for me personally. But I know that there's people who live and die by sketchbooks. They have to have a sketchbook handy. Um, another thing is practice. I know I say that to you every time. Um, you don't have one shot to get a painting done, you know? You experiment. Okay, well this is how I think I'm going to start it. And you do it. And then you stand back and you look at it and you say, oh, I like this, I like this, I don't like this, maybe I would like this better. And you do it again. And then you do it again. And you keep doing it again and again and again until you have a painting that you like. How do I know this to be true? It's what I do every single week for you. <laughs> you know, I'll start with an idea and sometimes my idea ends up being totally different than the finished product, but I don't worry about that. I'm just glad that I was able to get somewhere. So that's, that's what I do. That's what I think. Um, who inspires you and what is your favorite artist? Oh, that is such a hard question. Everyone inspires me. You guys inspire me. Art inspires me. Even if it's art that I don't like, it's inspiring. Um, I, that's a real answer. I don't have... You know, and what inspires me today may not be inspiring for me tomorrow. Um, and my favorite artist... Of course, I would have to say Van Gogh. I love Cezanne. Um, there's an artist that I just found his work recently and I'm like, why have I never heard of this guy before? And I can't think of what his name is, but it's, his art is very similar to Van Gogh, but with a very like dreamy, super, super moody effect to it. And I can't think of what his name is. Um, and yeah, so what else do you guys want to, what else do you guys want to talk about? Which painting did you, do you prefer the one you just did or the one that you practiced before? So which painting do I prefer, the one I just did or the one that I practiced before? Um, there are things about each one that I like more than the other, but overall I would have to say I like this one a lot better. Um, I'm, I like... The sky on the other one, I didn't go as dark as I wanted, and I like the definition of the clouds a lot more on this one. Um, I really like my ground on this one. I did put a little bit more energy into the road on the other one. So I like that a little bit more, but my tree is way better. <laughs> on this one, it's not sliding down the hill. So yeah, overall, I like this one much better. Um, so yeah, I guess we did this in under two hours. That's pretty awesome. I really appreciate you guys being here with me and um, you know, hanging out with me for my first live painting, yay! So hopefully we'll see more. I don't know that I'll be doing all of them live from now on, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So um, if you 
If you ask a question and I didn't get to your question, please feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will get to you, I promise. So I guess we are gonna take off and I will see all of you next week. Maybe we'll be live next week too. So thanks for hanging out with me, everyone. Bye.